Here we are again, lads and lasses. Yes, here we are again, ready to dip into the fun battle for yet another 45 minutes to three quarters of an hour of fun, laughter, joy. And what are you doing? Oh, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I wasn't listening. Oh. Sing it again. It's one of your best songs, huh? <laughs> I wasn't singing. Oh? What were those funny movements you were doing there? Oh, well, I was looking down, you see. Yes. Thinking to myself, what a beautiful piece of mechanism legs are. Yes, legs are, yes. Yes, I know that. What are you trying to say? <laughs> well, you see, yeah. as I walked on, mm -hmm. I looked down and I said to myself, as I walked on that too, tumultuous ovation yes. that we should have got. Mm. <laughs> I walked down and I said to myself, Eric, you are walking on two of nature's miracles. Well, I know. I said that. I know that. Oh, you know that because you are an educated man. That's why you know. How many A-levels have you got? Well, I'd rather not say. It sounds like boasting. I think it's time you did a bit of boasting, huh? Let's be honest, how many A-levels have you got? I deny myself the pleasure. You always have. <laughs> be honest, how many A-levels have you got? 23. 23 A-levels, ladies and gentlemen, this boy. 23 A-levels in... Mathematics. That's right. Am I right? Well, 17 A-levels in mathematics and another two making 23. <laughs> <laughs> In maths. In maths, yes. Oh, what was it you wanted to ask me, Eric? Well, I, I'd like you to work out, if you will, mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. problem in your head to prove your ability as a great mathematician. Any time you like. Thank you. Are you ready? Yes. I have tuppence in this pocket mm -hmm. and tuppence in that pocket. Yes. How much have I got? Two tuppences. Without a moment's hesitation. <laughs> How many A-levels? Uh, 23. 23 A-levels. And an O-level. I can tell by the shape of your legs. <laughs> Another question. You're still not convinced. I just want to prove to the unseen dozens of viewers <laughs> what a genius you are on a stick. Oh, thank you very much. Right there. Are you right. ready? Yes. Now, this is a difficult one. It's a difficult one, is it? Yes. There, would you like a blindfold for it? Blindfold? Yes. Oh, no, thank you. No, no. Just give me the mathematical problem. No problem. All right, then. <laughs> can you divide 45,000... I think I'd better have the blindfold. You got to play safe. Yes, please. Yes, I don't please. blame you. Mm. It is a difficult question. Right. Okay. <laughs> Can you? It's not too tight, is it? No, no. <laughs> Just thought of that. <laughs> Can you define mm -hmm. forty-five thousand acres with a Fahrenheit? Yes. And have you, Ernie Wise, got the correct answer? I must certainly have. This boy is brilliant, didn't I tell you? Thank you. <laughs> That was a tricky one, wasn't oh, it? Oh, very tricky, that one. Some of them are, you know. Yes, I know. I help you, you help me, and that's, that's the way it goes. goes. <laughs> right now, answer yeah. this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How many full stops are there in a bottle of ink? 49,224. Or one, one very, very large, large one. one. Boom! Boom. <laughs> that's very kind. Thank you. Do anything for a laugh, won't you? What are you talking about? I've only just come on. Do you, what do you mean? I haven't done anything yet. No, 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 no the suit's oh, all right. right. Fine. What is that on your lip? There's nothing on my lip. No. Not a thing. Nothing. That sounds like Tommy Cooper. <laughs> Never mind about the You should have you should have disappeared by now. What's that on your top lip? Oh. Nothing. Oh, nothing. No. Nothing at all? Nothing. You have grown a moustache. I haven't. No, I'm You not. haven't? No. Oh, that's not a moustache. I'm minding it for a friend. You... <laughs> so... That is a... Well, what is that? What is it? It's a false one. Oh, it's a false one? Yes. Oh, it's a false moustache. I oh, just that... said that, yes. In that it's case, a false it'll... moustache. It'll come off then, won't it? Yes. Yes. Get off. It'll come off. Ah, oh, touch it. You leave me bush alone. What are you doing? What, are you... what do you want to embarrass me for in front of everybody? Because I like embarrassing you. I know what you've done. You've grown a moustache, haven't you? A real one. And I know why. Because you're getting middle-aged. You want to present a new image, don't you? You want to look all young and trendy with that moustache. Not getting middle-aged. Yes, you are. Belt you. you... <laughs> you're losing it on top, so you're making up for it with that moustache, aren't you? Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! The truth, you see. I hit the truth. You're going bald at the front. I'm not! <laughs> bald in more. <laughs> Need to grow one of these to make for that up for that up there. Uh, I can always walk backwards. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never. 
We all know that. <laughs> we all know that. That's why you're so flaming frustrated. <laughs> you grew that for a girl, didn't you? No, she grows her own. <laughs> it's longer than mine. I've got ginger tips. Ginger tips. <laughs> to the snuff. Has anyone else seen it? No, it's the first time I've had it out. <laughs> first time I've been out since I started to grow it. You've embarrassed me now. And when did you start to grow it? Yesterday afternoon. You, <laughs> you grew that moustache overnight? Yeah. It is impossible to grow anything that big in 24 hours. Oh, no. No, not, not with a new miracle product that is out on the market now. Miracle product? Yes. And what's that? These. What are they? Moustache seeds. <laughs> Mustache seeds? Mustache seeds made by a firm in Bushy. Yeah. <laughs> now that is not true, and you know it. There's no such thing as mustache seeds. These are mustache seeds. In this packet of these seeds, huh? Mm -hmm. There is at least one nine foot beard or 35 mustaches. Really? Yes. I find that hard to believe. It's true. It's unbelievable. But do you know what? What? A mustache will suit you. Do you think so? Let's have a look. <laughs> I like that. But not that shape, though. Any shape you want. Well, what sort of a shape do you think I ought to have? A long one. Long one? Yeah, one of those go all the way down there, like a full man chew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. Yeah. So you can tie it on top of your wig on a windy day. <laughs> well, that's a good idea. It is. I do get trouble with the wind. I have heard that. <laughs> hey, these these moustache seeds, how do they work? It's got it written on the packet. Yeah? Place seeds on top lip yeah. in early March. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lie for three hours against a south-facing wall and avoid frost, which I always do. Have you seen that program? Yes, I always do. <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to try those, you know. I really would. Yeah, well, there you are. How much are they? Very expensive. Expensive? Twelve guineas a packet. Twelve guineas? Oh, what a shame. Twelve mm. guineas. Do you think I could get some round the corner? No, no, they've sold out. Sold out? So popular, Ern, oh. but they've sold out. Oh, I'd like to have had some. Mm. I feel really brought down now. You didn't have far to go, though, did you? Yeah. Let's be honest. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, I'll do for you. What? Teeny Chew. You can have these, and there's plenty left. Yeah. You can have those for the fiver. A fiver? Fiver. Gosh. Thank you. Thank you. My little middle-aged friend. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, there's the fiver. Hey, yeah. Mustache seeds. Now, what do I have to do? I have to put them up. Wait a minute. On your top lip. Place the seeds on the top lip. That's right. In early March. Yeah. And in no time at all, then. Look at me. Yeah. You'll have a mustache like that. A luxurious mustache like you, that. You'll feel the quality of that. All right. <laughs> That's gorgeous, isn't it? I would love to have a moustache. That's a beauty. You can't buy that. No. Have a look. See if it suits you first. No, don't, don't do that. What's it done? No, it makes me sneeze, you see. Eh? It makes me... It makes oh. me... <laughs> You'll never learn, you know. Never. How are you feeling? Terrible. Oh, well. Don't worry. I rang the doctor. Told him his symptoms. Oh, yes. He says you got flu. Good. I'll take no notice of him. He'll say anything for a laugh. <laughs> I went to see him last week. Yeah. He said, I haven't seen you in years, Mr. Morkham. I said, no, I've been ill. <laughs> <laughs> Fell about it, this. <laughs> Fell off the chair, got his foot caught in the stethoscope, tore an ear off. <laughs> hey, Sue! It's amazing, that, when you do that. That's amazing. I only sneeze. I know, but when you sneeze like that, your wig lifts about half an inch. It's all dead. Love <laughs> <laughs> that. I was expecting a bit of sympathy. I should have known better. A lot of flu about. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> Nasty thing, flu. You don't have to tell me, I know. <clears throat> you can die from flu. <laughs> Thanks very much. I'll be all right, though. Oh, yeah? Well, I had the injection of flu injection in my arm, didn't I? You'll still get it. Yeah, but my arm won't. <laughs> you know something? <laughs> if that thing got stuck up your nose and you sneeze, you could kill somebody. Do you know something? But <laughs> well, if you're going to sneeze, let me know and I'll duck. Shut up, will you? I haven't got the energy. Ah, tell that. You're not too well, I know that. You haven't written a play for 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I know that. But even a genius can catch flu, you know. I'll write six plays tomorrow. All the six. I'm going out in the afternoon. <laughs> well, it's time for your powder. Oh, not those powders again. I hate those things. I hate those powders. They're such a horrible taste. Don't worry about it. Do, do, I, do I have to? 
I've got your sweet. Oh, you've got a sweet here? Yeah. Oh, good, good. Take your sweet. Fuck you, Mark. What sweet? The sweet that you've got. What do you mean it's the sweet? Give me the Never sweet. The oh, the sweet. Oh, yeah. oh, I dropped it. Oh, I don't I'm want sorry. it now. Good I don't want it. Oh, my God. Cat hairs and good old bits off fluff. Those are terrible, those powders and things. Where do you get them? I got them from the new chemist. Got the road. The new chemist? His name's on the packet. Oh, yeah. Bob Martins? <laughs> Is that his name? <laughs> Bob Martins? You know him. <laughs> Bob Martins? You know him that well. <laughs> You've been giving me dog powder. Oh, sit, sit, sit. <laughs> oh, so how'd you leave? I couldn't take a gamble. I didn't know whether you got flu or distemper. What could I do? I feel all weak now. Wow. Well, could I have another cushion, please? You haven't eaten that one yet. <laughs> Something constructive. Go see if the doctor's coming or something. Go and have a look. All right. Ada Bailey's hanging out in knickers again, if you're interested. <laughs> Never mind about Ada Bailey's knickers. Is the doctor coming? <laughs> no, I'll see him. Oh, dear. Ill bad, dear? Really ill. I thought as much. Yeah. That's why I knew you wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind what? Well, I think now is as good a time as any. But is that time as any for what? Listen. Have you made a will? <laughs> How what? A will leaving everything you possess to me. On account of I've been so kind and considerate to you over the years. You've been kind and considerate to me over the years? I didn't know you'd realise that. <laughs> well, I've got it here. Now, if you just sign there, just put your name there, everything will be mine then. What is this thing here? What, eh? what is it? Ah, well, it's, it's a last will and testament, you see. A last will and testament? Yeah, you can get them in Woolies. <laughs> in between the Easter eggs and the Christmas cards. <laughs> I have never heard anything so revolting in all my life. Goodness, Anne. Whatever do you mean? What? What? First you try to poison me with dog powders and then you try to get me to sign a will leaving you all my money. Get lost. I'm not ready to go, not by a long chalk. <laughs> <laughs> You could be right, of course. You could have I'll hang on yet for a couple of days. You never know your luck. You, you, well, if you just sign that, I earn wise being of sound mind. No! Well, we know you're not off sound mind, but you've got to put that, haven't no. you? Otherwise, I won't get your flaming money. Just, listen, it's a bit of legal jiggery proper. You're not getting my hands on my money. Give me that will. You make yourself worse. Look, give me that will. I'm you make yourself worse, oh, huh? The room's all spinning round and eh? the legs have gone. This could be it. Lie yeah. down. <laughs> just sign you anyway. can't I'll wait. film the rest then. You can't wait for me to go, can you? And I thought you were my friend, and all the time you're trying to get your hands on my money. Well, I'm ashamed of your Broke, stuff. aren't I? That'll Broke. be the doctor. Let him in. Eh? That'll be the doctor. Let him in. It might not be the doctor. Might not be. Well, you never know. Well, who could it be? I don't know. But it might not be the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's simple, sir. Come back in about half an hour. I still believe you have a... No, it's not. <laughs> I can't! If I hadn't have seen that with my own eyes. What? What? Well, well, who was that man? What man? That man. I never saw a man. The man at the door. He was not an undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was. But I mean, you know, he only came in to ask if you got any empty boxes. Oh, That's all. <laughs> don't you talk to me. You disgust me. Ah, oh, well, uh, you might as well let me have your money. Because yeah. if you don't, the government's going to get it. I'd rather they had it than you. Look, what is the Chancellor of the Exchequer going to do with a trunk full of wigs? <laughs> I'll be honest, you're not going to get a penny and that's final. Oh, See, that is. All right, then. You'd be ashamed of yourself. Can I have a look at your policies, would you mind? Policies? Policies. You'll never find them. I've hidden them well. <laughs> uh, there's nothing in it for you anyway. Hey. What? Do you realise that... If you're struck by lightning, you get twenty-five thousand pounds. That's right. Yes. That's right. Twenty-five thousand pounds if you're struck by lightning. Yeah. It's a bit overcast. You don't fancy standing on the roof for half an hour, do you? <laughs> no. Put that policy back. You're not getting the money. Oh, come on, man. I'm the best friend you've got. You know that. Best friend I've got. Yeah. After all the tricks you've played on me. Well, you're like a brother. You are to me. Find where you've got of showing it. 
Yeah, but I'm not sentimental, am I? I'm not a sentimental person. Well, look, I'll tell you just this once, and that's it. I think a lot of you, a lot of you, and if anything happens, I'll be most upset. I'll upset you. I think you mean that, don't you? Well, of course I mean it, yeah. I mean, all that other stuff is just cheer you up, get a few giggles while you're not too well, that's all. I came at you a bit hard, didn't Forget I? Forget about it. If you can't, who can't? Let's be honest. I mean, you know, I'll do anything for you, cheer you up. You can hit me if you want. Go on, hit me if you want to cheer me up. Good Lord. <laughs> Oh, hey. <laughs> All right, I'll sign it. You're the best friend. No need to leave anything to me if you don't want. <laughs> all right, I'll sign it. After all, you've always been good and kind to me, haven't and you? And sincere. And sincere and honest with yes. me, and that's what I like. Right. Oh, that'll be the doctor. Go might, on. Mind, it sign the thing. Well, sign the flame. Where? What's the matter with you? Well, it must I be the doctor. You said you were weak. Let the doctor in. Might not be the doctor. Must be the doctor. Good no, morning, no, sir. No. You ordered a read? Yeah, it's about half an hour. <laughs> you, yeah, I saw the... Who oh, was that there? Who oh, was what? That, that, that woman there from was the... There was no woman there. The, that woman from the florist. No, it was the coal man. The, the coal man? It's his day off, yes. You, dress like that. I tell you, it's his day off. Oh, <laughs> you know, you look pathetically funny standing there. You're the funniest thing I've ever seen. Shut up. Do you know, you've cheered me up no end. I feel absolutely oh, marvellous typically now. you. Self, 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 <laughs> all the time. <laughs> really, but just fun. sit there, topple over and die. Go God. on, <laughs> First of all, you get the fella from The Undertaker and then the woman from The Florist. God, oh, dear, oh, dear. Do you know any more funny jokes like that? I don't feel well. What? You don't feel well? I feel a bit hot. Look, you... Hey, you've got the flu now. I feel all dizzy now, <laughs> wobbly. Look, why don't you lie down and be really ill? Go on, don't be selfish. Oh. That'll be the doctor. I'll go and get him. <laughs> Come in, Doctor. Oh, are you the patient? Uh, no, no, it's Eric. He's not well. Oh, well, let's have a look at him then. Oh, hello, Mr. Morecambe. I haven't seen you for a long time. No, he's been ill. Ah, oh, shut up! <laughs> get inside here, look. Get out! 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 <laughs> Can I help you? Good morning. It's a lovely morning now, I must say. Uh, yes, Sun's out, everything's clear. It's very nice, Beautiful. Sir, very nice. What can I do for you, sir? Well, I was wondering, in this uh, jeweler shop, do you sell diamond rings? Yes, only the very best, sir. That's what I want for her, the very best, because she deserves the very best. Uh, oh, yeah. Would you, uh, um, what did you have in mind, sir? Well, in the window there, yes. you have on a velvet pad. <laughs> yes. A most beautiful diamond ring, I think it's priced at three and a half thousand pounds. Uh, oh, yes, that's a very beautiful stone, sir. She's a very beautiful woman. She only deserves the best. Would you like me to take it out so you can have a good look at it? <laughs> well, there's not many people in the shop. How do you feel about that? <laughs> would you, sir, would you like me to take the diamond out of the window so you can have a look? I'll bring it out here on a velvet pad. Oh! <laughs> yes, 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 that's very kind. Well, I mean, if you, if you have a rush on, we could call back. No, there's no rush. <laughs> My time is your time. Very kind. Is it for madam? No, no, no. It's for her. <laughs> <laughs> I get it out of the window. What a nice man. He's a QC. QC? Queer as a coot. He can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Put it on, put it on. May I? Yes, yes please no, do. Please do. Oh. Oh, dear, I'm afraid it's a bit small. It won't go on my finger. Uh, don't worry. We can always have it made larger for you. Can I, can I ask you something? Yes? How, how can you make her finger larger? <laughs> <laughs> if we make the ring larger. Oh. Because if you can make fingers larger, yeah. there's a little job I wouldn't mind doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, madam? Oh, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. You want it? Oh, but it's so terribly expensive. Yes or no? Oh, yes. We'll take it. Take it. How much was it? Uh, three and a half thousand pounds, sir. Will you accept a check? Certainly, sir. Vladimir, here's a check all the way from Prague. It's yours. <laughs> what are you looking at? It's amazing. Amazing. What's amazing? It doesn't matter. Keep going. You're doing well. You... 
Well, we have a wonderful cast of artists for you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure. What are you doing? Uh, what? The only thing I can say is, somebody up there likes you. <laughs> to have given you such a magnificent body. <laughs> what about my body? Turn around slowly. Turn around slowly? Turn around slowly, let's have a look. Huh? Yes? You are the pocket Hercules. <laughs> I suppose you're right. Yes. Do you know that you, when you move, like you did just then? Yes. You can see all your manliness rippling underneath <laughs> your seat. Can you really? Oh, yes. Wow, that's wonderful. Yeah, that really is marvelous. It is. Yes. Yeah. Do, you know, do you know why, don't you? No. I keep myself in trim, you know. Do you really? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Well, it's obvious. Mm. Because all your muscles are rippling underneath that suit. When you walk, yes. you look just like a sack of walnuts. Yes. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Yes. And the noise as well. Yeah, well, what's so marvellous about my magnificent body? Uh, you can make a fortune with a body like that. Do you think so? Oh, I wouldn't kid you. you come here. Yes. How could I make a fortune? How? Male model. Male model? Yeah. Really? Yeah, you should go pose for the students down at the universities. But I'm only little. All the better. Well, well how do you mean? They won't use up so much paint then, will they? <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget. There's a lot of money to be made in art and paintings. Oh, I know that. My auntie's got a whistler. Now, there's a novelty. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet your uncle's never been late for work, has he? No. <laughs> it's all happening tonight. Yeah, how, much, uh, how much money do, these, do they earn, these fellas, you know, these oh, male models? Five guineas an hour. Five guineas an hour? Less ten bob. Less ten bob. Well, they give that to the little old man who warms a slab, you see, before you arrive. <laughs> he climbs on it in a fur coat and lies down, waiting for you to arrive. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to pose in the nude. No, that's out. Oh, you keep your armbands on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not posing in the nude. Well, you haven't got to pose in completely nude. No? Oh, good lord. No, they Three. give you a fig leaf. A fig leaf? Yeah. What for? Cover your expenses. <laughs> that's true. No, I couldn't possibly pose in the nude. I'm not doing that. Huh? No, definitely not. Well, I'll have to figure out some other way then. Think of something else. Yeah. Mail order catalogue. You... <laughs> <laughs> Mail order catalogue? Mail order catalogue. You pause in them. You... You... Well, the men do that. I didn't know the men You'll did that. You'll flip through any mail order catalogue book and yeah. you see all the men there posing. Mail models? Yeah, that's right, yeah. They're in between the outside snickers and the non-stick frying pans. <laughs> that is not... But what's... <laughs> but what sort of things do they model? Men's apparel. You could be another Twiggy. Yeah, that's true. We'll call you Stumpy. <laughs> Lumpy Stumpy Hearn. Words fail me. As good as that. Have I ever lied? No. Walk about me. Just walk about me. <laughs> You have got a magnificent body. I'm not kidding you. Really? A magnificent oh, body. Ladies true. and gentlemen, no, sometimes I go too far with him. Wait a minute, what did you just say? Just say Drivel. Nothing you, but drivel. You weren't, you weren't talking behind my back? I've never he wasn't what? talking about me, was this way. What? <laughs> uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Great. What a man. Carry on, then. Carry on, then? Yes. Hey, that'll make a good title for a film. Oh, I prefer Carry Off, then. <laughs> Now, please, Egg, I'm a professional entertainer. I have a duty to my public. You are nothing to your public, huh? Forget him. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, maybe for the last time... Could I have a chair for Mr. I'd Whitehead? like to say to you... Thank you. Are you sat down? Yes. You sure? Yes. Are you going to tell them now? I'm afraid so, yes. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, it now falls upon me to tell you the very sad news that Ernie Wise tonight would like me to announce his retirement. Somebody clap. <laughs> Ignore them. I've been dreading this for years now. Only Wise has become part of the British way of life. And you know how bad that is these days. <laughs> He's been entertaining us now for two decades. <laughs> decades. <laughs> Pardon? Decades. You'll have to speak up. <laughs> I haven't got my deaf aid in. Yes. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, little Ernie Wise is retiring. 
Somebody clapped. It's Lou Grade. Ignore him. <laughs> well, that's it then. You've announced my retirement. I might as well go. Please, sit down. I am sat down. Oh, I didn't realise. Sorry. <laughs> because the passing of a great man cannot go without a few words. But what are you going to do? I'm going to chronicle your doings. <laughs> Pardon? I'm going to chronicle your doings. You're going to tell them about my career? That as well. <laughs> One man and his fight for stardom. Here, here. Ignore him. Oh, it was you. I'm was sorry. About that. <laughs> I would like you, Ernie Wise, to catch your mind back to the time... Yes? ...when you were going around the provinces. I remember it well. The doctor says, take it easy, Ernie Wise, you're going around the provinces. Yes. <laughs> but it didn't stop you from working. Oh, no. My obligations were fulfilled. They were the hell of a size, I must yes. admit. <laughs> Sure. That's what the doctor said. <laughs> As you started your quest for stardom, the world vibrated to the drums of war. A dreadful experience for all of for us. For you more than most. When your country sent out a plea for all able-bodied men to take up arms, you didn't hesitate. You put on your mother's frock and pleaded insanity. <laughs> you didn't have to tell them that. It is a pointer to the man. Anyway, the war came to an end and Kaiser Bill was defeated. <laughs> Wasn't that war? Oh, the other one? Yes. The replay, I didn't see it. <laughs> we now move to a small theatre in the Midlands. Only Wise had just come off on his first ever public appearance. Yes, that was a night to remember. You leave the stage with thunderous applause mm. and shouts of more. Yes. You had never seen anything like it before. Oh, that's a fact. You walk off the stage, you put your clothes back on. <laughs> well, it was a novelty act. I don't doubt it. And it got laughs, too, I'm told. Yes. <laughs> I finished my act by leaping off the balcony into the stalls and doing a quick split. And two months and 30 yards of sticky tape later, <laughs> you made your comeback, still striving to become a star. More than anything else, I wanted to become a star. Can you remember, early wise, what happened next? Well, I wrote to the BBC telling them what I could do. And they wrote back telling you what you could do. Yes. <laughs> As your career began to flourish, you bought a house on the side of a hill. On the side of a hill, ladies and gentlemen, next to a penny amusement arcade. And that's when the money started to roll in. <laughs> that's a clever one. Yes. That one out. Especially over the bank holiday. It was then... <laughs> it was then you began to realise... I'll wait. <laughs> Long enough. It was then you began to realise the plight of others less fortunate than yourself. Yes, I did become aware that there were lots of poor people in London. People in need of clothes and money. And this prompted you to move to Peterborough. <laughs> It was the only decent thing to do. Of course. Mm. Then came the turning point. The circus. I watched you perform as Ernesto on his vanishing ferret. Yes. <laughs> you came on in a big black cloak. Mm. I said the magic words, and your ferret disappeared completely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Two weeks after the operation, I went to see you in hospital. <laughs> I remember. I remember. I wonder how many people here tonight realise that the ferret is now for two o'clock. <laughs> Somebody clap. It's her husband. He's French. He can't help it. Do <laughs> you remember our first meeting? Yes, I do remember. We decided to team up and have a go at comedy. We should have tried that. Yes. <laughs> well, it's too late now, anyway. Well, goodbye. Thanks for everything. Before Thank you go, would yeah. you please stand up? I am standing up. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, sit down. I didn't realise. Because I have a little surprise for you. Surprise. The many friends you have made throughout your career mm -hmm. have all chipped in. A collection. A collection. Oh. The rich, the famous, the talented, and Jimmy Tarver. <laughs> <laughs> they have asked me to present you with a retirement present. I've a memento! I've always said there's no people like show people. Ask any prison warder. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. <clears throat> on behalf of your many friends, oh, good Lord. I know it's... Poignant. I am deeply moved to present to you this magnificent quarter pound of pear drops. A quarter pound of pear drops? Uh, true. If you look inside this bag, you will find at the bottom a pear drop suitably inscribed, lest we forget her. Lest we forget Ern. I scratch it on with a nail. <laughs> You're not going to forget Ern because Ern's not going to retire. Oh, don't be wrong. I'm going to carry on. Still trying to become a star. But I am a star. Rubbish. 
Let's have a look there. Where, where's there's no pear drops in there? There is, look, just there. Up, hey, ho! Oh. Come on, I'll take you. <laughs> to disturb you at this hour. Well, what is it? Mrs. T. Potter? Yes. What's the matter? Mrs. T. Potter of 59 Dingleview? Yes, I'm Mrs. Potter. What is it? Wife of one Harold William Potter. My husband. You've come to tell me something. What is it? Your husband, he's a steeplejack. Oh, I knew it. He left home this morning to start work on the almost completed 56 story block of flats. Oh, in the name of heaven, tell me what's happened. Well, when he gets home, tell him we found his canary, will you? <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Can I ask you something? We... What? Pardon? What do you want to ask me? I'll tell you. Every week... Yes? You come on the stage... Yes? And the first thing you say is, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. That's right. Now, 48 years we've been together. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I knew it looks it. Yeah. And me, it looks longer. <laughs> <laughs> and you walk down with little fat hairy legs going like that. Yes. <laughs> and you say, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Can't you think of anything original? You go home on the bus. You say to the fellow in the bus, man. You say to him, the conductor, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Don't you say that to him. Are you picking on me? <laughs> You're my size, yes. <laughs> Are you having a go? Well, why not? It's about time somebody did her. You're worse than a bad mother-in-law. Hello, hello. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Can't help it. I've got a wonderful show for you tonight. See what I mean? You never leave me alone, do um, you? And what I want to know is, how comes a little man like you can have such a big mouth? <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. He can't stop. He's in a trance. You never leave me alone, do you? Pick, pick, pick all the time. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome to the show. He's making it all up, I'll tell you that. You know... I'm living in fear. I don't you... know what he's going to say next. You know why, don't you? Why? Well, you know what? That's all I ever... <laughs> That's all I ever get to say on the show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the... That's all I ever get. Don't get any funny lines. You get all the credit for this show. Everybody says how good you are. All the papers, they always talk ah, about ah, I don't get... Ah, just... ah, <laughs> if I just get a word in. <laughs> Look at me when I'm trying to get a word in. Oh. Good evening. All the papers, you say? All the papers, yeah. All except... That one. <laughs> you mean there's a write-up about me in that paper? This fellow's no mug. Oh, he's Which no mug. It's a strange, strange name for a critic. Yes. <laughs> as you well know on occasions, mm. these critics have had a go at us. Oh, they do have a go at us sometimes. Remember that fellow who wrote Morecambe and Wise? Mm. Put a lot of effort into trying to please. Yes. But the end result was rather disappointing. Yeah, I remember. And we thought he'd be talking to our wives. Yes. No. Yes, I remember. <laughs> we also thought we were on so much. Yes. That we had some strange hold over the high up BBC executives. Yes. Implying blackmail. A slur on our character. That's true. That's true. Incidentally, you still got the picture, haven't you, of Lord Hill and Funny Craddock? Yes. <laughs> I never lived out of my cell. Don't. That is our pension for the future. <laughs> During the past rather dull week on both channels... That's fair, isn't it? It is. Impartial. Impartial. Yes. Bubble. <laughs> the rehearsals. <laughs> the here. The highlight for me mm -hmm. was the appearance of one of the most competent performers on the small screen. <sighs> Knows what he's talking about, that fella. You're thrilled now, aren't you? Yeah, he's no mug. There's more. I told you that. Is it? Really? Yeah. What? In my opinion, mm -hmm. this man is one of the most underrated performers in the country today. <laughs> Very intelligent, that man. He knows talent when he sees it. Of course. Although the constant target for his partners, Jipes, Japes and Japs. That's a nasty one at you, that is. <laughs> <laughs> You're letting your head off now. Oh, I am, I'm going yeah. mad. He still manages yes. to come out on top mm. thanks to his natural dignity. Ah, uh, he knows what. Oh, that's Along, right. along with millions of other viewers, mm -hmm. I would very much like to see this man in a show of his own. Well, what can you My say? impression is that this man's undoubted talent yes. 
Is railways no longer going to be relevant to climate change? Come on, but what did you mumble then? Nothing. That what you just said when you got to the most important part. Read it out loud so everybody can hear. It's agony for you, this, isn't it? Go on, read it out. About this me. man's undoubted talent is being suppressed by his less gifted partner, who seems to want to hog all the line mark. There you are. I'm being suppressed by you. Wanted to hog all the line mark. There you I are. would like to end by saying the sooner Ernie Wise clears off, the better. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> the sooner Ernie Wise clears off, the better. He didn't say that in that paper. Yes, he did. Let me have a look at Get it. Get off. It's my paper. <laughs> Hello. Paper of me own. What's your paper? The Times. You've been to that posh fish and chip shop again? <laughs> You should hear what it says about you in this. They never mention me in there. Yes, you guys know my name right for one. Maurice Wiggins. Eh? Maurice Wiggins. I don't know her. Listen to this. <laughs> Eric Morecambe is the worst comic on the telly. That's not right. So he says... It can't be the Times. You never said telly on the Times. Don't they? Small screen or the box. <laughs> it says telly in this. Telly in this because it's a special edition. <laughs> special edition. <laughs> Eric Morecambe is the worst comic on the telly. He's rotten. <laughs> what is <he> <laughs> That's what he says. I'll thump you. Oh, I'll punch you on the nose. I'll kick your legs on my yeah. nose. <laughs> 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 I don't know how I'm going to tell him about this. Church! <laughs> Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? L U T O N Preston! <laughs> L U T O N Preston! You can't spell you. <laughs> Come and sit down. It'll be a talk tight to game you. this afternoon, I'll tell you that. A tight game. It'll be a draw. 3 1 for us. Be on match of the day tonight as well. How do you know it's going to be on match of the day? Because I've seen the referee going into the barbers to have his leg shaved. <laughs> That's all I know. Suppose you'll be sitting in the director's box. You're joking. Sit with a crowd? Good, they know nothing about football, those people. Yeah. Nothing. Check up, see if I've got everything. Tickets. Rattle. Apple. Apple? It's doped. I'll give it to the policeman's horse as we go in. Oh. <laughs> I'm talking of horses. What? Shall I get two meat pies for our tea on the way home? Don't bother. Oh, listen, I want to talk to you. Well, we can't wait till after the match. By the time you get back from the match, I won't be here. Oh, well, that's something to look forward to in case we lose. <laughs> I'm serious, I won't be here. Going to get your hair done? <laughs> no. Give it to me if you like. I'll drop it in on the way to the match. <laughs> Show it back inside on the way in. Now that's enough. Collect it when I come out again. That's enough. Oh, read that. Telegram. That's right. Telegram. Read when did, it. When did you get that? Why you were in the bath? You've had that for six months and never told me. Oh. <laughs> now stop the joking and read that telegram. I don't like telegram. You don't like telegrams? No. Why not? It reminds me of the telegram my mother got during the war. From the war office. Really? My dad was missing. Sorry to hear that. So was an army truck and 48 cases of corned beef. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, read it. Do you know when my dad got out of the army, we all thought he put weight on? Yeah? Do you know what it was? No, what? He was wearing 17 demob suits. <laughs> <laughs> read that telegram, please. This telegram? Yeah. Now, he's not going to tell me that you're dead, is it? Oh. <laughs> Get up. Well, I've been with you a long time. I wouldn't even notice. I'm, I'm with you 24 hours a day. How would I know? Give me the telegram. I will read this telegram. Now, well, listen very carefully. Hurry up. The match starts in five hours. <laughs> it says, Dear Ernie Wise. Well, that's not important. I'll see you after the match. I haven't read it out yet. Well, hurry up, will you? It says, Dear Ernie Wise, delighted, delighted that you agree to accept the position as my head writer will call on you later today regards Bob Hope. Bob Hope! <laughs> How about that? Yes, very good. I don't understand that message. You don't understand it? It only means 
that Bob Hope wants me to become his head writer and write all his jokes for him. That's all it means. Bob Hope? Yes. He lives in America, doesn't he? Of course he lives in America. What? I will have to leave you and this country and go and live in Hollywood in a big house with lots of shirts and a car with a button that you press that makes the roof go up. <laughs> a car with a button that you press that makes the roof go up? Yes! You're joking. I'm not joking. I've never been more serious in all my life. Really? Yes. Honestly? I swear by everything I hold most dear. Well, go on then. <laughs> I swear that this telegram is perfectly true and it is not a joke. It must mean it. This is tightly packed one. <laughs> <laughs> this has come as a bit of a shock to me, huh? Well, I've got a lot of talent going for me. I can't turn down an offer like this. It's great, you. It's... Well, when did you first hear about this, then? Well, I read about it in the stage. In the what? The stage. It's a theatrical magazine. Have you ever seen it, Steve? No. Oh, there's one in the house. So wait a minute, it's here, look. It's full of jobs available in show business and people looking for work. Look, the stage. Is this it? Hmm. Herbert and Sylvia make peace. Still at it on the grand piano. <laughs> <laughs> Does your mother know you read stuff like this? <laughs> What's wrong with that? Bernard Delphont still looking for girls. <laughs> for the summer. Doesn't it do it in the winter? <laughs> Elsie and our disappearing canary. Is that a picture of Elsie? The one with the big red face? Is that Elsie oh, there? <laughs> hey TV becomes 51st American State. <laughs> now, what did I do with my camera? What do you want that for now? Well, when I get there to Hollywood, I'll be able to take pictures all over America, won't I? That's true, yeah. Incidentally, when you get there, yeah. don't go to Disneyland. Why not? Come on, I'll let you out. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I'll let you out! Hey, Snow White and the Eight Dwarfs. Yeah. <laughs> ah, now, <laughs> what did I do with my autograph book? Huh? You're not taking that old thing, are you? You've only got one autograph, in it? My uncle by crook, I'll be first in this book, sign your mother. <laughs> 1812? <laughs> Just had to wrote, she wrote the overture. Yeah. No, I'll be able to go to Hollywood and get the autographs of all the famous stars, won't I? Now, I know you're all excited and everything, but I don't want you to get upset when I tell you something. What about Hollywood? What? Shirley Temple. She's <laughs> almost 47. Really? <laughs> yes. She's Lee Marvin's mother. <laughs> <laughs> And Donald Duck for cartoon. That's, that's a terrible disillusionment for me. They are. You've got a first aid factor on when you go abroad. Still, it doesn't make any difference. I'm going to be Bob Hope's head writer and write all his scripts for him. He'll be coming round this afternoon. He'll probably want me to go stateside. Are you giving everything up that you've worked for in this country? Yes. Your career? Yes. Your fan? <laughs> Even him. <laughs> Well, where's you going to send all those mint humbugs to at Christmas? Because I don't want them, they're losing me filling. Yeah, I, oh. don't know. <laughs> I don't know and I don't care. I'm going to be Bob Hope's head writer and that's all that's true. Well, I'm up to the matter. Eric. What? Eric. No hard feelings. Oh, no. I mean, nothing's changed between you and I. Good Lord, of course not. Same as it always was. Just a simmering hate. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be Bob now. Eh? That'll probably be Bob Holt now. Oh. Hello, Eric. Come in, Bob. <laughs> Bob? Tell him, Mum. I I'm going to America, Anne. To America? Yeah, America, yes. It's going to be Bob Hope's head waiter. No. <laughs> head writer. Oh, head writer. I'm going to write Bob Hope's jokes for him. True. I don't believe it. I am. I'm going to live in a big house in Hollywood. And you're going to have a car that you press a button and a shirt goes up at the front. <laughs> I'm expecting Bob around any minute now. Any minute now? Yes. But what about Eric? What about Eric? Doesn't matter about Eric. <laughs> Who's Eric anyway? Let's face it. I've Nobody, been... is he? I've got a lot of talent going for me. I can't turn a job like this down. Poor Eric. Yeah. Don't worry about me, Anne. Take care of myself. I'll have to get myself another stooge. J stooge? <laughs> I'm not a stooge. I'm a straight man. I can't even with legs like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you something else as well. What? 
They don't have flaming national health over there, you know. Flaming national health? No, they flaming don't. Oh. If you go to Chicago, the Windy City. Yes. <laughs> and that blows off, you'll have to buy a new one. <laughs> Be earning a fortune, one. Yeah, it? you've never earned anything in your life. You've oh. always relied on me. Oh, please don't start arguing. Can't we talk about this? <laughs> anyway, I'm going now. He's made up his mind. I'm off. Oh, you can't leave him like this. I'm going. What are you going to do? I told you. I'll get myself a new straight man. Stew! All right, then a stew. But who? <laughs> Malcolm Muggeridge. Malcolm <laughs> Muggeridge? Why not? From what I've seen, he only works on a Sunday. <laughs> Six days a week clear, and it's great with the ad libs. Yeah. Ernie, you can't leave Eric like this. I'm sorry, Anne. That's genius as a ruthless. But you can't do it. I'm on. Eric. What? Before you go. No heart feelings. No. Put it there. <laughs> I knew it. Well, not your hand, your neck. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Change, you won't. But why should I? Eric, you can't part like this. Not after all these years. He'll be. But he won't be able to write for Bob Hope. I won't. No. I won't be able to write for Bob Hope. No, you won't. I won't. Now listen, let me tell you something. I've written jokes for him already. Oh, have you? I've written some jokes for Bob You've kept that to yourself, haven't you? I know, and he likes them. He thinks they're fabulous. Oh, does he? Yes. But go on, then. Go on, then. Let's hear a few. I'm not going to tell him like this. I'll show you how Bob Hope's going to do them. I just look, sit down, and I'll show you. Now, I'm Bob Hope, right? And I'm wearing a big American suit. And I come onto the stage, and he's all relaxed. You see, Bob Hope. And the music goes, thanks for the memory. Does he sing that then? No, he doesn't sing it. The music, it's played by the orchestra. It's a signature tune. Yes. Then he says, he says, hi, folks. It sure is great to be back. Where's you been? <laughs> you haven't been anywhere. That's what they always say. Oh, that gives the man behind the camera time to turn the cards over for him to read. That's right. Yes. yes. <laughs> hi there, folks. It sure is great to be back. Then he does my job. Your job. He says, listen, folks. It wasn't the apple in the tree that caused all the trouble in the Garden of Eden. It was the pear on the ground. <laughs> Have you got a return ticket? <laughs> I don't need a return ticket! Let's face it, that's what they do in America! Well, no one of them trying to get to the moon now. <laughs> Oh, no, nothing. No. Okay. Good evening, all. All merry and bright. <laughs> Who are you? Bob Pope. I beg your pardon? Bob Pope. Bob Pope. Bob Pope? Yeah. Bob Pope? Now, where's my head split right? He's over there. Ah, lady, lady, lady. <laughs> Didn't you get my telegram? Oh, Did you fabulous. Want to yes. well, come to the match? Love to. Two, four, four six, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Hell, you, D-O-N, Stu. Yeah! Hey, man. Everybody, thank you. I'd like to thank all of you for watching me and my little show here tonight. If you've enjoyed it, then it's all been worthwhile. So until we meet again, good night. And I love you all.